And I was wondering, how do you decide what you invest your time and money in? Yeah, well, I, I, I like to find businesses that have good economics. Now, what, what are good economics? Well, good economics are a business that has some kind of a moat around it that makes its product or its service or its location or something a little more desirable than to the customer than any other sort of comparable product. Uh, you know, the number one candy bar in the last 30 or 40 years has been Snickers. People don't fool around with different candy bars. They fool around with different length dresses. They fool around, you know, with all kinds of things. But they don't fool around with candy bars because they figure, you know, they're going to go in and lay out 50 cents or whatever it is and put it in their mouth. And they're not going to, for 50 cents and putting it in your mouth, I mean, you're not going to say, I'll, I'll, I'll put in, I'll lay out 45 cents and put something else in my mouth. So you find that very stable. And we like businesses that we think we can figure out where they're going to be in 10 or 15 years. I don't know where the information technology businesses are going to be in 10 or 15 years. I know where Snickers bars are going to be in 10 or 15 years. They're going to be selling just about the, you know, the way they do now. I know where Wrigley's gum is going to be in 10 or 15 years. There's not going to be a lot of innovation in, in, in chewing gum. Uh, and the Internet's not going to cause people to quit chewing gum either. I mean, at least, I mean, Gates may think so, but I don't think so. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's, it's predictability regarding the sustainability of a competitive advantage, some, something special about a product. So we look for those kind of products, and then we look for people that are running the business that are honest and able. And, um, you know, that's, it's easier to find people that are honest and able than it is to find businesses that are going to stay wonderful for a long period of time. There are a lot of businesses that looked like they were going to stay wonderful, but really evaporated over time. But that's what we're looking for. And the nice thing about it is we don't have to find very many. If we find one a year, that's terrific. Because you, know, you, don't, you don't need a hundred or a thousand great investment ideas to do well. You, you need a couple. And uh, if we, the discipline is the most important thing. We don't need brain power. We, we need discipline. At, uh, you don't need 150 IQ to do what I do. Thank God. You know, you don't need 140. You don't need 135. You may need 115 or something like that. And, and, but you do need discipline. You have to wait until you see the fat pitch to swing at. Because investing is a no-called strike game. You know, if I, if I were a baseball player and I only liked pitches two inches above my navel, you know, some guy could learn that and he could pitch me, you know, three or four inches below that and I get called out on strikes because I never find a pitch I like. You can get called out on strikes in baseball. You have to, you have to swing at pitches that you, you don't even necessarily like, particularly after the count gets to two strikes. In business, you don't have to swing at anything. You can sit there and the paper says General Motors at 68 or it says General Electric at 115 or it says General Dynamics at 63. And if you don't like those prices, you don't have to swing. You can wait there day after day after day after day and there are no called strikes. Now, when you swing, when you decide to buy something, then, you know, if you swing and miss, it's a strike. But it's a marvelous game to be in because there are no called strikes. And you can simply wait for that one time in a month or six months or a year or two or three years when you really know what you're doing, where you like the price, where you like the people running the business, and then you swing. And you only need a few swings in your lifetime. Uh, so that's the way we try to pick businesses. We try to stay with, with things we understand. I mean, there can be all kinds of wonderful investment opportunities out there that I don't understand. I don't know what cocoa beans are going to do next year. You know, maybe you know, but I don't know. I, I don't know what, I don't know what uh, crude oil is going to sell for. But I don't have to know. I just have to know the things. I have to know what I know. I have to know where the limits of my understanding are, the, what I call my, what my circle of competence is. And if I'm only able to evaluate 5% of the businesses in the world, no problem. I just stay within that 5% and try and find something. Uh, and that's, most people get in trouble because, in investments, because they, uh, well, they get itchy. You know, they can't discipline themselves and they hear about other people making money. Nothing upsets people so much as to hear about their friends making money. I mean, it, that, that's very destructive to discipline because they think, you know, I'm smarter than that guy next door and he just, just bought that new car with the money he made trading stocks on the internet, so why can't I? Well, the answer is you can't over time. You will lose money if you trade stocks actively. And uh, uh, it's, it's hard to exercise the discipline. But anytime you buy something, you should be able to take out a one-page sheet of paper 
and say, I'm buying General Motors at 65. I'm buying General Electric at 150 because. And you should write down the reasons. If you can't, if you can't fill out the sheet, if it's because somebody told me about it at a cocktail party last night, that's not good enough. If it's because my broker told me about it, that's not good enough. You know, it's, uh, you've got to have a reason for thinking that it makes an intelligent investment. You do the same thing if you're buying a farm or an apartment house. If you're buying a farm, you'd say, I'm buying this farm at $1,000 an acre because I think I can earn $60 an acre on it. If corn sells at such and such and soybean sells at such and such and yield is such and such. And you'd figure it out. That's the same reason you buy businesses. And when you buy stocks, you're buying a little piece of a business. And that's probably the most important thing to remember in, in investing is that when you are buying a stock, you're buying a little piece of the business. And it, if you are buying it at an attractive price for the business, for the whole business, you're going to make money. And if you aren't, you know, over time you won't make money.